We've moved on to energy. That's the next post-it note, folks. Energy, okay? Is what you are doing worth the energy you are spending on it? That's the question. Energy is a valuable resource. It's a limited resource, and it needs to be replenished regularly. It's a resource that we can use to support our well-being or not. This is actually what the parami is talking about. It's about committing to our own well-being and using our energy to move in that direction. No one can do this for us. Once we've been launched, once we're on our own, we have to figure out how to take care of ourselves and where and how to use our energy. And yet many of us struggle with just that. How often do you spend an inordinate amount of time and energy rehashing the news or some conversation that you had or you wished you'd had with someone or getting lost in trying to fix or solve some computer problem? And hours go by. Some of the biggest energy drains these days reside in social media, in checking our phones, in the news, and in surfing the web. And what do they do for you? When you're done, do you feel better? Do you feel energized? Do you feel at peace, at ease? Recently, this topic came up uh, with someone. She's a professor. She's in the prime of, of her career, and she struggles with time management and procrastination. And we talked about her taking an inventory on where she actually spends her time, including what tasks she actually needs to get done and what, what time she um, and what she wanted to spend time on, what those activities were. And the final thing was whether those activities brought energy or depleted it. So until my 40s, I struggled a lot with prioritizing what to do and how to spend my energy wisely. I'm a do it once, do it well kind of girl. I give 100% to everything, but I learned that not everything needs 100%, that not everything needs to be perfect because not everything matters. And this came to me to start. It was a Monday morning and I was writing a, a new to-do list for the week, copying over the items from Friday that I had left over from Friday from the last week onto the new list. <laughs> and at some point, the light went on and I put my pen down. And yes, I'm dating myself when I say, I was using a pen and paper to write my list down. But I put my, my, my pen down and I thought to myself, when I die, there will be things on this list that won't get done. Now, that was really a revelation. And I was, I was in my 40s. And then I thought, at the end of my life, what on this list will matter? Will it matter if I wrote a particular report or went to a particular meeting? No. Will it matter if I really whittle down my 2,000 emails to zero and keep it that way? Eh, no. In fact, very few things really mattered on that list other than taking care of my patients. So from that point forward, my priorities began changing because I was realizing as if for the first time that life was short that I only had so much energy and that I wanted to use that energy well. And for me, that also entailed uh, putting a stake in the ground for meditating daily. It isn't easy to, because we, we get caught up in all kinds of extraneous details in life. We get caught up in the busyness of life and we forget, we forget what's important we forget that it isn't forever. So recognizing and remembering 
again, this truth that life is finite, that my energy is finite, helped me to begin to discern what really mattered, where I wanted to place my time and energy. Back to the professor. She started tracking how she was spending her time during the day and triaging her tasks, sorting out the ones that were absolutely essential uh, you know, for her work and for her well-being. And she started to, to do the, the good enough method of completing the less important things. Right. And saying no to people and to things that drained her energy. She also started working in smaller increments of time for the harder projects and the tasks, like, and taking brief breaks in between to walk the dog, to get some fresh air, stretch your legs. And instead of getting overwhelmed with cleaning, well, she, she'd see what she could do to tidy up in five or 10 minutes. And to which she discovered that cleaning small areas brought a sense of ease and well-being, which was a delight to her. And furthermore, she found that tidying her space up in the morning, first thing in the morning, primed the pump for meditating. I thought that we laughed at that one, but like a little bit of movement. She, she doesn't like to exercise at all, but she said, you know, actually just moving my body around and just like moving little things and getting my coffee and just puttering about actually <laughs> helped her settle more comfortably on the cushion. So the crux of the matter is, are we spending time doing things that are moving us in the direction of well-being and waking up? I mean, that's why it's harder for us to do a retreat at home. We get distracted by all of the little things in our house, all the little tasks that we never seem to have enough time to do. Suddenly we have the time on retreat. On retreat. <laughs> right? Be careful. Is what you are doing really important? Is what you are doing supporting your well-being? Is it cultivating the heart? At the, end, at the end of our life, what really matters is the condition of our heart. Not our possessions, not our wealth, not our power, not our social status, but our hearts. Let's make a commitment for, to our well-being. Let's make the foundational intentional thrust, the energetic push to make sure that we sit down every day with our with ourselves, that we meditate, that we really take the time to check in and see how we're doing in here, see what's rolling around, see what needs to be cleared out, see what, need, what, what can't leave, but we need to make room for. This is for our well-being. This is using our energy wisely. This is one of the things that the Buddha extorted before um, exhorted before he um, uh, before he died. He said, he said, do not wait to practice. Don't kick the can down the road. Don't wait until you have time. That won't happen. So put put a stake in the ground. Put a stake in the ground for your well-being. Meditate. Commit to that every day. Five minutes, 10 minutes, three minutes, one full inhalation, one full exhalation. We can do that. We can do that. We already are, right? We already are. It takes no more effort. You know, this practice is not glamorous. We don't earn any, any awards of distinction or notoriety, but it will affect every cell of our body. And it will affect all of the moments of our day. And it will give us the resource that we always seem to be in short supply of, energy. It will give us energy. Caring for our well-being gives us energy. Let's commit to our well-being. Let's practice. <laughs>